Welcome back to Anatomy of the Car. In this week's episode, we're gonna talk about the nose. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any notifications for new content. When I was going through all the detail of the nose with some of the designers and engineers, Dr. Ben Evans reminded me that we've got a great episode of Cisco Bloodhound TV starring Ron Ayres, our chief aerodynamicist, that goes into the shape of Bloodhound in great detail. It's one of my favorite episodes. Check it out, the link will be below. When I sat down to talk to the guys and girls to understand why we came to the decision we did on the nose and its shape, it was really interesting. Let me share some of that with you. First of all, the nose is built in two sections, a titanium nose piece and then a carbon fiber main box. The titanium nose piece is made using an additive layer process. There's some other really interesting parts on the car that use the same process, so I'll come back to that in full detail when we get to those to explain just how that works. But in the first instance, the nose, it's made of titanium because it has to cope with quite a lot of erosion and high speed. And we look, went to look at that to see what the detail was. And chatting to Dr. Ben, I'd assumed wrongly that this would be the first part that would see supersonic airflow. And it's not, it's actually the rear wheel wells, so the first parts of the car to see airflow over supersonic speeds. So we'll get to that when we get to the back of the car. But the front of the car is still working incredibly hard. Whenever we see CFD drawings of the car, we'll note that the front of the car is almost always red, and that's because the pressure's really high. And it's seeing some incredible forces, and it's dictating the flow of air over the whole of the car from the front back. It generates some of the biggest shock waves, and again, I'd wrongly assumed that it would be the biggest shockwave on the car being the first one to catch up with that air that hasn't had any warning that the car's coming because it'll arrive silently when it's supersonic, but it's not. Again, the biggest shockwaves actually happen towards the rear of the car, but it's still a pretty impressive shockwave when you look at it. What does that shockwave do to that lead part, that titanium part? Well, it gets quite warm. Again, some scribblings from Dr. Ben at 20 degrees, uh, desert temperature, we're likely to see 134 degrees of heating for that component. Now, that doesn't take into account a bit of conductive um, heat moving away into the rest of the structure and a little bit of convective heat loss with the airflow going over the car when the car's moving a bit slower will cool it down. But this still is generating one of the biggest shock waves on the car. It's getting hot, it's getting eroded by any dust, and it's working really hard. Carbon fiber composites normally are really light structures. In this case, this is quite a heavy part, but it makes sense when you start to think about how hard it's working on the car. I'm gonna show you the inside so you can see the pressure ports. And you'll see these all over the car and they're for collecting air pressure data for comparing back to the CFD. So the nose looks like a really simple part of the car, but it's actually working incredibly hard. Let's pop it in position and talk some more about what the load is. So I asked Dr. Ben, what kind of surface pressure is this part of the nose seeing? And he did a quick hand calculation for me, and it's 138,000 pascals. That's the same as not one, but two African bull elephants standing on the nose. Next time we're gonna talk about the blade, but don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to make sure you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.